As the demand for tactile and braille signage continues to rise, there's never been a better time for fabricators to join the tactile signage market. Today I'm speaking with Romark's Fabrication Shop Supervisor Bobby Payne and Accent Signage's Marketing Manager Christy Cutter, who will provide helpful information on tactile signage trends today and the different processes for making tactile signage. This will be part one of a two-part series. Welcome Bobby and Christy. Bobby, could you tell us a little bit about Romark and the company's role in the tactile braille sign market? I'd be happy to, Hillary. Romark is the world's leading manufacturer of engravable sheet plastic for the signage, engraving, and award markets. We're the largest supplier of architectural sheet products suited for braille and tactile sign making applications. Romark doesn't sell finished signs, but rather we house a variety of fabrication equipment at our Finley, Ohio manufacturing facility. This includes the lasers, rotary engravers, and tools for braille sign making. To test the performance of our products and to better assist our customers with questions when working with our products. Great. Thank you, Bobby. What about Accent Signage, Christy? Could you give us some background on your company and the services you provide the ADA sign market? Accent Signage Systems is an award-winning wholesale fabricator of tactile interior signage for both the national and international markets. We've developed the raster braille system that allows licensed users to produce tactile signage efficiently and sustainably. In addition to providing our customers the tools they need to create tactile signage, we also have a sign shop at our Minneapolis facility where we can produce any size sign job for our customers. Our extensive knowledge of digital imaging, materials, and color science allows us to create unique and elegant interior signage. We also provide a strong technical presence in the industry that allows us to assist and advise customers with their signage projects. Now, before we begin talking about the technical fabrication side of tactile signage, Bobby, can you help us understand if and how the tactile signage industry has changed? Sure. Regulations have become more specific over the years to better accommodate the blind and visually impaired, requiring a wider variety of businesses to use the tactile signage as part of their wayfinding signage program and creating more consistency between the state and federal building codes. That said, these changes are good for fabricators in the market as they point to significant increase in the demand and continued long-term need for tactile and braille signage. What about from the design side? Has tactile signage seen any advancements in this area? And what are the trends of today? This is an important point, Hillary, and one that should encourage fabricators who are on the fence about adding tactile signage to their business. From a design standpoint, tactile and braille signage have come a long way from their origins as being very utilitarian. Designers and sign makers alike now incorporate it as part of their larger sign vision and customers can decorate tactile sign materials through digital printing, custom painting, and full color sublimation. There's now so many different colors, substrates, and mounting hardware that can be used while still remaining compliant, not to mention the variety of sign shapes and sizes and dimensions, which opens up a lot of creative possibilities. Christy, based on Accent's expertise in this area, could you explain the most common fabrication processes used today for the manufacture of tactile signage? Sure, Hillary. The two processes that are most commonly used today are raster braille insertion with ADA-compliant substrates like materials Romark offers and photopolymer. Raster braille tactile signs are manufactured using an engraving method. The braille is used by drilling precision holes into the material and forcing very small balls, called raster spheres, into the holes to form the braille character. Photopolymer signs are produced using computer-generated artwork, which is transferred to a film negative that is placed on the surface of the photopolymer sheet in the processing unit. The sheet is exposed to ultraviolet light, which hardens the raised area and is then placed in the washout tank, where the unexposed photopolymer is washed away. That makes sense. Let's get a little more specific for our listeners. Could you provide a few more details on the raster braille fabrication process? Separate from the raster braille process, the raised copy can be produced in two different ways with Romark's ADA-compliant sheet materials. In the applied method, the raised letters are produced by gently placing an adhesive-backed 1 32nd inch sheet of colored engraving stock onto the face of the background panel and engraving the letters and pictograms. After engraving, the surrounding material is peeled away, leaving the letters and pictograms adhered to the acrylic backer. In the inlaid method, the raised letters are also produced with 1 16th inch sheet of colored engraving stock but the copy is cut separately from the face. You engrave slightly below the surface of the background material, giving the letters more tamper-resistant and making them look like they are an integral part of the background material. 
To learn more technical details about the two most popular methods for tactile sign fabrication and to hear about some of today's hottest tactile sign making products, stay tuned for part two of this podcast series. In the meantime, visit www.romark.com to view Romark's sheet products for tactile sign making and check out www.accentsignage.com to browse a wide variety of other tactile fabrication tools, products, and services.